Hey! So, yeah, excuse my loveliness, but um, here is the first um, walkthrough for chapter one and two of Breaking Free. Um, one thing that I noticed <laughs> this book isn't going to be easy. <laughs> Did anybody else notice that? <laughs> no, it looks like it's going to be a lot of work, but I think it's going to be totally worth it. Um, I think anytime you decide to break free from anything, it is going to be difficult because you've got to see, um, you've got to acknowledge what you need to break free from, first of all. And um, that can be painful sometimes. But in reading these first um, two chapters and then the stuff before the introduction and stuff, man, um, you know, there's some definite things that I know, I mean, she talks about pride and things that we're going to have to break through to be able to to even figure out what we need to break free from and uh, I just I'm praying that we are all able to get to that place um, I think sometimes we're not honest with ourselves um, I know I am I was thinking to this morning actually just an example of that um, this Sunday uh, Pastor Tim spoke on um, keeping secrets and hidden sin and um, you know, all the ways people do that and what it can do to your soul, you know, it can, it can, you know, destroy your soul, really, and it keeps you from where God wants you to be in life, but I was thinking, you know, how, what are the ways that, um, you know, maybe we're not honest with ourselves, maybe I'm not honest with myself, and I was thinking about some of the things that he was talking about, like, I mean, as basic as, you know, uh, stealing office supplies or, you know, um, you know, claiming things on your taxes that aren't real, you know, that are dishonest. And I was thinking, you know, in my head, I think I've always, one way that I haven't looked at, not that I do those things, but I think those are integrity issues. And yeah, those are integrity issues, but I think it sounds different when we say we're choosing not to have integrity and we're doing those things or when we say we're choosing sin and that to me this morning was a revelation because you know let's call an ace an ace and a spade a spade yes um, you are having integrity issues but the true issue is the sin of the lack of integrity and what specifically you know if you're you know not if you're stealing off if you're taking off the supplies from work it's not it's not only integrity you're stealing you know if you're saying that you're claiming something on your taxes that it isn't true um it's not integrity yes it is but you're lying <laughs> you know um those kinds of things that I mean, are seem seem unimportant but they're still sin and um anyways all that to say, those are, you know, calling it integrity and calling it sin, those are kind of the things that I'm thinking, I want God revealed to me those things that I'm kind of calling something else. But in reality, it's bondage and captivity. And, and I, if I'm without those things, then I'm going to be um, that much further um, to being like Christ. So, um, you know, I... <sighs> So I hope you guys are enjoying the book so far. Man, my hair is crazy. Okay, but that's okay. You guys know me. You know how I look. <laughs> I look like this sometimes, and I look like I have when I have my hair down. You know, whatever. But anyway, some of the things that stood out to me, um, page two that I had highlighted was a Christian is held captive by anything that hinders the abundant and effective spirit-filled life God planned for him and her. That was, I like that. Page three where it said, um, we can be saved. The Holy Spirit can dwell in us. And yet we can continuously live in defeat because the enemy can outwit us if we do not depend on the Holy Spirit and the word of God. So, I mean, that tells me right there as we go through this book, it goes hand in hand. You know, we, we need to be in the word to stay free and um, depending on the Holy Spirit in our lives. And then in pa on page three, it said, we've got to know that we're being swarmed. We've got to know we're being swarmed. Wise up in the word 
of God. Learn what our rights are and learn to use the equipment God has given you. You know, I mainly highlighted this reminds me of when I went to Brazil. God really revealed to me the importance of knowing what our gifts are, what our rights are as Christ followers, um, the confidence that we can walk in, the um, victory we can have just by understanding and knowing what um, what are our rights? What's in the Bible, and what what is the what does God tell us that we can use to our benefit? The Holy Spirit being one of them, but um, and the Word. But you got to know what's in there. What's in the Bible? What are God's promises? What are the things I can stand on? What is all of heaven behind me? Um, you know, walking me through. You know, what example? You know, in the name of Jesus. You know, evil must flee. Period. In Jesus' name, you know, they must, you know, it, whatever it is must lay down at Jesus' feet. You know, things like that. If you don't know, how can you use it? You know, if you don't understand what your tools are, what your weapons are, um, you don't want to go to battle for freedom and not know what your, you know, what your tools are. You know, what, what do you have to, you know, what are the things that you can count on? What are the, you know, and when you're doing without those things, you're just, I kind of used an example not too long ago, you know, when you need a hammer and you're using a screwdriver, you're probably not going to get the job done. No. If you need a hammer, find the hammer, you know, you need to know. You need to know what your tools are and what you need and you need to have it, right? So, okay, enough of that soapbox, but it's important. I think that's one of Satan's biggest <laughs> um, things that he uses against, you know, he, he tries, he doesn't want us to know these things, you know, he doesn't want us to have our weapons intact and, and available for us. But anyways, in page six, um, if you stick with God, you will be so unique in the body of Christ that whether or not you ever wanted to lead, you will. That's what happens when people become victors. <laughs> that is true. That has been true in my life. I am not, it's not like I've wanted to step out and lead. Or, you know, even this Sunday I had to lead worship and, um, or I got to lead worship. But I, you know, <clears throat> up until... So even Sunday morning when I got up, I'm thinking, you know, my stomach gets ang anxiety and I'm just like, Lord, you know, why am I, why, 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 you know, are you, am I supposed to be doing this? Is this what you've called me to do? I know it sound, may sound ridiculous, but I mean, I go through these times all the time, but I look at my life and I think, how did I ever get to this place? It's because, you know, um, that's what happens when people become victors. I believe that I have become victorious in things in my life that kept me down and it does happen. You end up being leaders in one way or another and um, even though it can be overwhelming at times I think it's pretty awesome. So that's something to look forward to. Um, on the page 13, pride will be an obstacle every believer must face on the freedom trail. <laughs> yeah. Pride is hard, and I think that sometimes we have, a lot of times we have pride and we don't even realize it in one form or another. Um, the way we look at others, the way we look at our own lives, the way we look at our family, whatever. So, um, yeah, I definitely believe that in the Freedom Trail, you got to deal with the pride issues. So, number page 13, to be free in Christ, our high places will have to be to fall. We must be willing to take a stand against idolatry. And that's a hard one. But you know what? Uh, well, the hard thing is, first of all, to, being able to, to, to see where your high places are. That's, that's not always easy, you know? And sometimes we can just justify and justify why the, our high places exist, and we don't call them idols, <laughs> do we? So I think that's going to be a big challenge for me. But that's okay. I'm willing. I'm willing to go through it.
The other one is page 18. If our liberty in Christ is going to be a reality in life, we are going to have to learn to walk in the freedom of Christ, independent of everyone else we know. All by ourselves, baby. Me, us, and God. Right? Can't worry about anyone else. I mean, we love, we love and we care and we serve, but ultimately, independent of everyone else. That's a biggie. Yeah? Oh, gosh. So those were my highlights. Um, I still need to write down my scriptures. Um, honestly, I just started reading last night. Um, I mean, I read the bulk of it last night, so I haven't gotten to write my scriptures down, which I'm going to do today and start memorizing. Um, I hope you guys do the same. I hope you're enjoying this book. And I can't wait. I hope that you guys give your perspectives and your what stood out to you in these two chapters and maybe what you feel like, you know, your obstacle obstacles, what you can see lying ahead, I don't know, um, anything, but either way, I just, um, yeah, I like doing this, so I hope you guys respond and um, don't get too scared with my lovely appearance. <laughs> All right, God bless, and I'm praying for you, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.